trouble losing weight, need more energy. Oh, okay, what little uh, technical glitch there on the intro. Well, anyways, welcome everyone. Uriel came here, founder of Healthpreneur, and you are watching HPTV Live. Today is Wednesday, March 1st, I think. And just in case you don't know me, my name is Uriel Kim. I'm the founder of Healthpreneur, and uh, we are a leader in helping you turn your expertise into expertise for health or fitness into a thriving online business to create more impact more income and more freedom for yourself and that's what this is all about because i really believe that serving you the health or fitness professional you have a gift a message that can transform people's lives more so than any other profession on this planet your ability to help a diabetic or help somebody prevent or reverse type 2 diabetes or heart disease or help them lose 20 pounds or help them overcome sugar addiction, or help them whatever it is, that is a gift that no accountant can ever replicate, no financial planner can ever replicate, only the health or fitness professional. You guys are special, and that's why I wanna serve you. Anyways, so I've been doing this for a while, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to free yourself from the shackles of the in-person day-to-day time for money exchange and moving towards transitioning online if you want to. Now, not to say that you have to have a full-time, 100% online business, but the thing to remember is that if you wanna impact more people, you have to be in a position where you have a couple different freedoms. Freedom of time, which allows you to do more of what you want when you want to do it, instead of being like, oh my God, I have to be here at seven o'clock in the morning to train a client, which was in the position I was in when I first started training clients 20 years ago, working 16 hours a day, showing up at people's condominiums at seven in the morning, working in the gym afterwards until like eight o'clock at night. That wasn't the life I wanted to live. It also gives you the freedom of money to do what you want, when you want, where you want, and with whom you want. So obviously when you can set up more leverageable systems in your business so that you're not the only person doing everything, now you have more freedom in terms of your time and you're starting to earn money without you actually having to be there to exchange the money or doing the selling all the time. Third is it gives you the freedom of relationships. So if you wanna be able to surround yourself with more awesome people, influencers in our space, people who can help elevate your business, keep your mindset at the top of its game and raise the bar, raise what you think is possible, well, having the freedom of time and money to be able to attend events, to be able to be parts of groups like our Luminary Mastermind, to be able to go to different things that are gonna now connect you with other people in our space is very important. Because otherwise you're just a lone ranger doing everything all by yourself. And that is a simple way to what's called solitude and depression. So <laughs> let's not have that happen. So anyways, today we're talking about how to go from the one-on-one -on -one in-person stuff to a little bit more of a leveraged, systemized online business. And once again, what I'm gonna share with you here, is I'm just gonna pull up a few of my notes here so I just stay on track, is I wanna share with you three ways that I made the transition from working offline to online. Now, once again, there's a lot of different models you can follow. There's the you can train clients online, one-on-one -on -one virtually. So for instance, let's say you're a clinician, you're a naturopathic doctor, and you wanna virtually meet with people on Skype or Zoom, you can totally do that. At some point, you're only gonna have so many hours in a day and you are gonna hit a ceiling. But that's one model you can definitely do. It's more of like a consultant model. Another way you can look at things is doing some type of group training program. So one of our Luminaries Mastermind members runs fat loss, online boot camps for 500 to 1,000 women at a time over a six week period. And she has more leverage as a result of doing that. So she's impacting hundreds of people instead of just one at a time. Then you can also move into a more of a product-based or information knowledge-based type of business model where you're creating products, courses, eBooks, in some cases, maybe even supplements, which are obviously a form of a product. And you're sharing your expertise in a way that's packaged and positioned 
so that you are not the one who is providing the service. It's now more of you productized. If that makes sense. So how do we make that shift? So as I mentioned before, I started off in this industry as a personal trainer as I was going through my kinesiology degree at the University of Toronto. At the time, I was working about, well, not while I was in school, but during the summers off. And as I finished school, I was working about 16 hours a day from morning until night, very few breaks in between. And I was very underpaid, you know, making maybe 25 bucks an hour after the gym had taken its cut, all that kind of stuff. So at some point, I realized, you know, this is not what I want to be doing. This is not the impact I want to have as much as I love my in-person clients, some of them more than others. I realized that in order to impact more people and with Healthpreneur, I really want to impact and I believe collectively we can impact 1 billion people on the planet by 2040 by me helping you become more influential and more impactful with your work. And I knew that I wanted to impact more people and I, I wasn't able to do that one-on-one. -on -one. So 2006, I came online, but when I say I, I kind of started my online business, I was still training my clients the majority of the time. I had started a website, which was I probably still in existence, to be honest. I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's slightly embarrassing. But anyways, I had no idea what I was doing for the first three years or so. And what I started to do was this, and this is what I'm going to recommend you do if you're starting off is when I was in the gym training clients, and let's say I had an hour or two hours throughout the day to myself, instead of wasting time gossiping with other trainers and reading magazines that really were, were of no value to me or, or other people, what I did is I locked myself in another room and I started to flesh out ideas for some type of workout program I was gonna develop. Now, I'm gonna share with you a really simple way of how you can figure out what you can develop to create that product much more seamlessly than having to you know, try to figure out a code to break into Fort Knox because it doesn't have to be that difficult. So what I would do is I would spend one to two hours a day devoted aside for starting to think about and start developing this product. Now I would recommend the same for you. If you're currently working from nine to five in a different job, or and whatever it is you're doing and you want more leverage, if you want to create a product, you have to set aside some time. And maybe that means going to bed an hour later, although the preference I would recommend would be going to bed earlier and getting up an hour earlier because you'll get some amazing stuff done in those wee hours of the morning. Between five and seven when everyone's sleeping, you get some, you're up at that point in time, that's where magic happens. So this book, the All Day Fat Burning, sorry, All Day Fat Burning Cookbook, its predecessor, The All Day Fat Burning Diet, and the New York Times bestseller, The All Day Energy Diet that I wrote, all three of those were written in the space of probably collectively five months between the hours of five and seven in the morning. And so that is even if you're, so that's how even if you're busy, you put aside time to make it happen. So don't give me the excuse or yourself the excuse that I don't have time because we all have the same number of hours in a day and if you're too tired, well, guess what? Energize yourself. Damn, use my energy greens, right? Get some nutrition, some nourishment into your body. Elevate your energy so that you can get more stuff done in that same period of time instead of laying around and feeling tired and lethargic. You can carve out an hour a day. Think about this. One hour a day is 30 extra hours per month. Multiply that by 12, that's 360 hours per year that you just created out of nothing. 360 hours, if we divide that by 40, for a typical 40 hour work week, that works out to be about, um, what is that, six, seven, that's close to about seven and a half 40 hour weeks over the course of a year. That's just by adding one hour a day to devoting to your development of your book, your product, your idea. So don't underestimate small amounts of focus time can be very powerful. Okay, so how do you determine what is, um, what's viable in terms of like a product to create in the first place? I'm just gonna refresh my feed here so I can make sure that 
this is actually coming across okay. And if you guys have any questions, by all means, let me know in the comments. If you're joining the replay, welcome. Okay, so the second way or the second tip I'm going to give you here to move away from the one-on-one -on -one trading time for money to now becoming a little more leveraged is to create a book, a program, a course around the most repetitive problem that you continue to solve for your clients or customers. So this was actually fairly, actually, you know what? This is actually a very underutilized component of what most health entrepreneurs do. We have an unfair advantage over almost everybody else with an online business because we've actually come from a place or are in a place where we are working or have worked with in person people who are going through specific challenges. A lady comes to see you who's 50 pounds overweight. Well, guess what? You're having a conversation with her. You're working with her in person. You're getting to know her desires, her fears, her frustrations. That is golden market research. Don't underestimate that. You don't have to do survey monkey and online surveys when you're dealing with people in person. You have the intel right there. What you'll find is that you'll consistently see patterns over time. You probably already have in your business. When I was training clients, I consistently saw the same patterns over and over and over again. How do I lose the last 10 or 15 pounds was one of them. So if I kept getting the question or clients coming to me wanting to know how do I lose the last 10 or 15 pounds, even though I'm eating well and even though I'm exercising supposedly well, what do I do? Well, what I could do is I can continue training these clients every single time and I would have no leverage, I would always be trading time for money, and I would have no freedom for myself. Or I could think about if Susan comes to see me, if Joanne comes to see me, if Deborah comes to see me, if Tom or whoever comes to see me, and they have the same goal, what is the protocol I'm gonna put in place to help them achieve that end result? Yes, there's gonna be individual variances, sure. But for the sake of a product, you want to think of what would be the, again, the one-size-fits-all solution as best as you possibly can that is going to help as many possible people. No product is ever going to be personalized. Just understand that. That's totally fine. That's why people pay more to see you in person. That's why a service-based business can charge more than a product-based business. But if you want more freedom of time and money in your life, you have to leverage your expertise with some type of product, book, course, and so forth. So when I first started online, my first product was a program called Fitter You, which was a 12 week weight loss workout program for beginners, because that was typically the clientele that was coming to see me quite a bit. So I said, you know what, what am I doing with these people? And how do I turn it into a product that I could just sell to them or give to them, even when I'm not training them, they could benefit from. So I recorded all these workouts, me over your headphones, guiding you step-by-step step through your workout as if I were there with you virtually. And so that's what I did. I thought to myself, if I'm not here with Deborah, how can I give Deborah myself, even though I'm not there? How can I give her a protocol to follow that she can follow on her own that would almost be the exact same thing I would give to her if we were to see each other in person? And that's how you can start thinking about developing your courses, your nutrition protocols, your exercise programs in a way that serves people based on what they're already telling you is a big problem or pain point in their life. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to go through all these crazy hoops. Just think about with your current existing market, what are the major, what's, well, let's just start with one. What's the major problem or pain or desire that people want solved? What's the most common question you get asked? What's the most common goal people want you to help them achieve? Create a product or a course around that. That's a great starting point. Now, once you've, so we talked about putting, so tip number one was putting one to two hours aside per day to devote to creating your thing. Second is creating something based on the most repetitive problem you continue to see or the most common desire that people ask you about, okay? Third is now you have this created. How do you get this in front of more people? How do you get more people coming to your stuff? 
Well, I'm not going to talk about the whole content strategy and relationship building stuff to really build a tribe. We'll save that for another day. But what I do want to share here is some water first. Is you want to really get yourself out there in a way where you can expose yourself. Well, not, not in that sense, right? Obviously, we're going to keep everything, you know, under clothing. You want to get yourself out in front of more people and provide expertise and guidance and actually help them by helping them. So the best way to do this is by using good old Facebook. Now, if you're using Facebook, let's say you want to help people lose the last 10 or 15 pounds. Well, what might be some good Facebook groups to join where your target audience might be hanging out? Let's just think of Insanity, P90X, beach body groups. Let's just use that as an example. So you request to join, you're in the group, you're now inundated with thousands of potential customers who are already using a workout program, which is fine, but let's just use this as an example. You're in there. The worst thing you could do is, hey, my name is so-and-so, I've got this product, come buy it. Don't ever do that. You'll get spams, you'll get banned, you'll get, that's just not the way to do things. So play this for the long run, okay? This is not an overnight success type of strategy. This is a how you build authoritative thought leadership in a space and become the preeminent expert that people flock to over time. So join, and again, I'm giving you the option, the free version here. Yes, you can run Facebook ads and do all that kind of stuff. Totally cool, separate discussion. Here, if you're on a shoestring budget, you've got a bit of time on your hands, maybe this is part of your one to two hours a day, okay? Join the relevant Facebook groups. Introduce yourself and then add value. You have knowledge and expertise that can change a lot of people's lives. If you're dealing directly to the customer, which in most cases you are, you're gonna find consumer groups, right? P90X, people using P90X. So you go in there, in our example here, and people might be asking questions about the program. If you have no knowledge about the program, then obviously don't be in that group. But let's say you just wanna chime in where people might be asking questions that you can jump in and respond to. Let's say somebody asks a question about, you know, should I be eating breakfast, breakfast before my workouts? Boom, you have some expertise on this, let's say. Hey, Joanne, thanks so much for your question. That's a very common question. And here's my take on this. Blah, 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 blah. Or you could actually shoot a little video and embed it as the comments in that Facebook thread. Now people see you on video, you're adding value. Now, again, doing this once is not gonna make any impact. You wanna be doing this repetitively. But again, it's all give, no ask. All goodness, all goodwill, all value. All you're doing here in this group, in this little microcosm of the universe, is you are presenting to this tribe of people. My name is so-and-so, and I'm an expert at XYZ, and I can help you with your questions. And all you're, you're not saying that necessarily, you're, just, you're showing, you're demonstrating that you can help them by actually helping them. So if someone has a question, you jump in and you answer. Someone has another question, you lend them some helpful advice. Maybe it's a resource, maybe it's a tool. What I would strongly recommend you avoid initially is directing people back to your website. Don't say, hey guys, I got this website, let me know what you think, check it out. Again, what happens as a moderator of a group myself, I click on that X button that says ban and block forever. Don't be that person. It's helpful if you say, listen, um, I have no affiliation to this company or this resource or this tool, but here's something I use that you might find valuable as well. So again, you're, all you're doing is providing value. Value, 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 value. You are top of mind, tip of tongue. What you're doing here in this group or this set of groups is you are starting to place yourself as a authority, a leader inside this group of people. And what you wanna think about is when people think of X, they think of me. So when people think about having more energy, they should be thinking about Uriel Kane. Not only have I written the New York Times bestselling book on energy, I also have a product called Energy Greens. I am known when people think about energy without caffeine or sugar, they should be thinking about right here, okay? When people think about burning fat without killing themselves in the gym or depriving themselves of delicious food, they should be thinking about me. 
And that's just based on the way I've positioned my content and my information and my products and my stuff over the course of years. So however you wanna be perceived in your marketplace is the type of information you wanna provide for those people in those groups. Eventually, once you've been in there for a couple of weeks, and I go, again, a couple of weeks, not a couple of hours, you've continued to add goodwill, value, you've built some relationships with other people. Maybe you've sent them a private message saying, hey, thanks so much for that question. Hopefully this helps you out. You know, hopefully we can connect in person, at, you know, whatever. You're building relationships with people. Then and only then, after you have established yourself as somewhat of an authority in this group, can you maybe drop a little bit of a plug for your stuff? And maybe it's a blog post. Maybe it's a new video you posted on YouTube. But it's not, hey, check out my program, go buy it. Not gonna happen. Get people into your world of contents, let them consume that, let them opt in, then present them with an offer. If you, it's funny. So I was um, conducting our content mastery workshops last month in Los Angeles and Orlando. And a lot of the attendees were like, dude, you say you have all these products, but I've never seen any of your products. Like, how are you even making money? Like, what's going on here? On my blog, if you go to yourrealcame.com, you will see zero products, nothing. Although I've created over 200 products in the course of my 11 years online. Now, not all 200 products are, you know, selling. We keep a lot of them in the archives because they're just old and dusty and not worth it anymore. But we do have a good half dozen that are a big chunk of our business. But we don't overtly say, hey, buy our stuff. Our philosophy is we are forward-facing with 100% content and goodwill. That's it. If you want to buy one of our products, you don't even know what they are. You can't even buy it. And yes, maybe we have limited our opportunity there in terms of people who are looking for existing stuff they've already purchased for us. So for instance, if they want to get more greens, well, they'll have the website to do that. It's right in the bottle. But for the most part, I just had to double check something on the label. Uh, for the most part, we are forward facing with contents. And that's a decision that we made. I'm not saying you have to do that. But if you're going to go into groups and establish relationships and be of service to other people, do not blatantly promote yourself. It's not going to work. No one likes that person, right? You've probably been in groups. Hopefully, you've not been that person. You've probably been in groups where you've noticed other people doing that. So don't do it. Cool? So that is how we start to transition from doing everything either online or offline in a one-to-one -one setting where you have no leverage and therefore you have no time. Even if you charge $5,000 an hour, good for you, but eventually you can only see so many people in a day. So if you want to capture some freedom back in your life, you have to leverage yourself with products that do the work for you. And so I hope these three tips have helped. So again, number one, set aside one to two hours a day to work on your stuff. Number two, create something based on the most common recurring problem or theme you see from, from your clients or customers. And three is in this process, and that at, literally at the same time, is start to inject yourself in Facebook groups that have your ideal customers and start to just engage with them. Literally for weeks and months before you ever ask for anything. I'm telling you, this is a slow game. It's a long game but it will pay off big time for you if you do it properly. Again, you don't have to spend all day on Facebook. 15, 20 minutes, just answering questions, just giving value, done, move on to other stuff. That's it, just do that for a couple of weeks. In time, you can start moving people down the sales cycle. And over time, people will be searching you out because they're gonna see, wow, this person's so valuable. They're gonna click on your Facebook picture. They're gonna see your Facebook page, your profile. They're gonna start to know more about you. They're gonna start to follow you. That's how it works. People love buying. They don't like being sold to you, okay? So that is all for this week. If you've enjoyed this episode of HPTV Live, be sure to share this. If you're watching on Facebook, click the share button with another health or fitness professional you know could benefit from this information. Do you know a health coach or maybe a naturopathic doctor who is at their wit's end seeing patients all day or a chiropractor who is just up to his eyeballs and patience and wants more leverage, or maybe a personal trainer who is training clients all day long, has a bigger vision for their life, but doesn't know where to go to solve the problem, share this video with them. Again, we're on a mission to help a billion people by 2040. 
I'm on a mission to end suffering for entrepreneurs like you and end suffering for the average consumer with their health. I need your help. I can't do this all alone. Yes, that's the deal. So every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, I am here on Facebook. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, cool. Join us on my Facebook Health Printer page every Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And that is where we are doing all the awesomeness. Next week, I've got a great episode coming your way. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. It's a surprise. But in the meantime, go through the action steps I've shared with you here. Share this video with your peeps. And I will see you guys next Wednesday. In the meantime, be sure to like the page, the Healthpreneur page, because I've got lots more awesome stuff coming your way. Every single day, I'm doing micro videos, giving you some food for thought, some quick tips, some inspiration to help you build your online platform to help more people make more money and enjoy more freedom. And finally, boom, last thing, save the dates. September 14th to 17th, take out your calendar right now and literally block it off your calendar with a question mark. I will tell you more about that next week. Believe me, you don't wanna miss it. In the meantime, have an awesome day, take action, be great, do great, and I will see you in our next episode of HPTV Live.